Thanks to the wheel on the top, this pink can stabilize itself and it is called a reaction wheel. It took me 3 years to make it stable, was it worth it? I'm not sure, but at least it finally works. Well, almost. It's also not like that's the first thing I tried to make stable. I tried with my life and as you can see it never worked. But speaking of project, that's me 7 years ago when I have been building my DIY Arduino based drone in my living room from scratch, including the frame, the remote, pretty much everything, the control board. It was a pretty complicated project. What was the biggest problem? The PID algorithms. And in fact, that's what these two projects have in common. They both contributed to the development of my fear of PID algorithms. I mean, they both need them in order to operate properly. The drone in the end was working okay, and I wanted to do the same with the reaction wheel, at any cost. And I almost failed a few times, but what is a reaction wheel? Some important information before I start. The base is rounded, so this thing is not stable by itself. As you can see, it falls either to the left or right. But how does it work? To every action, there is reaction, so as the motor is spinning up the wheel with a mass, there is a torque generated, and with this torque we can stabilize the reaction wheel. But to where things like that are even used? Well, for example, in satellites, from small CubeSats to James Webb Space Telescope, most of them use a combination of reaction wheels and magnetotorkers to properly set the attitude in space. But one can ask why to build something like this in the first place? Well, because I've watched some YouTube videos like this one and they inspired me so much because this thing seems so cool and you can even build it with Legos. There is a lot of videos like this, so I thought let's give it a try. My first design was based on a very small motor and that really wasn't working so I designed a lot more complicated thing with a bit bigger motor and then a huge motor that was attached to an aluminum profile with some limiters to make the testing easier. Unfortunately, I lost all the footage from these tests. I have no idea how this happened, but all I have left is a box labeled reaction wheel with all the parts I printed previously. What I also did not have was the memory of how it all works together. Fortunately, I will create a good documentation for my next project. That's what I always have been telling myself. But I didn't really like the 3D printed parts and electronics on the breadboard, so starting from scratch sounds like a good idea. And then sketches were quickly turned into a CAD design that you can see there that was then 3D printed on Ender 3. I still don't have the Bumble Lab machine, but the printing speeds are so tempting that it may change very, very soon. But for now, Ender works kind of fine. The motor that I'm using there is kind of interesting because it's from a company called Nidets, Nidek, I have no idea how to pronounce it, but it's a brushless DC motor with an integrated driver and an encoder. I found someone selling this motor on eBay, but generally those are not easy to find, but might be very useful in your project. I'm not a fan of protoboards, but I'm going to solder quickly one for the reaction wheel because having all the mess with the cables is going to disturb how the reaction wheel is working, so a quick protoboard is a good solution for that. Protoboards will definitely not make your project look great, but they will make your project work very very quickly and that's the great thing about them. My holes that I designed weren't exactly where they should be, so I just drilled some additional holes with a drill. Me from a year ago would probably redesign and reprint the parts, but right now I prefer to get things done rather than perfect, so I just drew the holes and then I started the experiments. The wheel that you see, it wasn't just plastic, there were metal nuts placed from the back of the wheel, but I felt like it's not enough, so I also designed another wheel with nuts and screws and higher mass, and that unfortunately was not working too. And then this happened. I made a scratch on my brand new desk and I was very very sad about it, so I decided to give up with the project. No worries, I didn't just simply give up and while fear of PID algorithms and trying to fix the reaction wheel without any progress might sound funny, there are some serious implications of working on very sophisticated projects. As I spent more time on working and trying to build even better robots, machines and electronics, I see how important it is to not only finish the project, but also take care of my mental health. Pretty often to get better results, I don't really need to spend more time on the project, but assure that both my mind and body are in a good state. That way I'm simply more productive. 
while I love solving engineering problems on my own, I think that other problems are much easier to solve with the help of professional therapists. BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video, a platform that understands the mental toll that intense work can take, provides a solution. First off, BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and provide unbiased advice. It's a seamless process. You simply go to their site, answer a few questions, and BetterHelp matches you with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles like yours. You can do it all from your phone or computer via messaging, phone call or video chat, whichever you feel most comfortable with. If you are feeling overwhelmed or facing professional challenges, I highly recommend giving BetterHelp a try. Let them connect you to a therapist who can support you. If you want to try it on your own, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash nicodem. Using the link is a great way to support the channel, but it will also get you 10% off the first month with BetterHelp. Remember, your mental health matters, especially when you are taking on big projects. Take care of yourself and don't hesitate to reach out for support when you need it. And now back to giving up with my project. But of course, three days later, I was ready to continue and start again from scratch. I was hoping that lowering the center of mass will help a lot. And there was also a problem. Every time I wanted to change the PID values, I had to connect the Arduino to my computer, modify the values and upload the new program. That was very time consuming and not super easy to do. I think the number of days that one can spend on tuning the PID algorithm is finite. And I think I achieved this number for me and it's around four days, because for the last four days I have been just focused on tuning the PID algorithm, not even programming, not redesigning things in CAD, it was just tuning the PID algorithm. And it's pretty boring, pretty unsatisfactory when it doesn't work and I'm not sure why it takes so long. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And the most important thing, does it work? Yes, it does. It is stable. It is not as perfectly stable as I would like it to be, as you will see in a moment. The wheel speeds up and it's not really able to control the position that precisely, but it does work. It was a fun project. I'm really happy to finally see it somehow working, but there is still a lot I can do to make it even better. So maybe I will in the future, but right now I'm done with reaction wheels for a while. <laughs> but of course, three days later, I wasn't, and I decided to finally fix the problem with uploading the program over and over and over again. By simply adding a Bluetooth module to the Arduino, of course I thought about it before, but I was too lazy to do it, and now I regret this decision a lot. So I soldered the cables to the Arduino, just directly to the Arduino, and now I will simply connect the Bluetooth module with the gold pins, and I also found an app for Android that seems to do exactly what I need it to do and I can add like custom sliders and buttons and connect through Bluetooth. The app is free, I will link it in the description. And hopefully now when I will be able to easily edit the values without uploading the code every single time, I will be able to really tune the reaction loop. I hope so. And I hope this will solve all the problems. Because if not, well, I'm done with this project. I would really like to say that I learned a lot, that it was a beautiful journey and that I enjoyed it a lot, but honestly I was just simply going mad. It was crazy spending so much time just on modifying three values to get it working. There were times where I felt like I'm really doing some progress and then there was like nothing for an hour or two. It was just completely not working as I would like it to. Let me play some happy music in the background and sorry that this clip is a bit long. But at this point, it finally started working and it was stabilizing itself, it was standing for about 20-30 seconds and it like really was not overshooting in any direction. So that was pretty cool. It wasn't easy, it wasn't enjoyable, but at least it worked. With many failures along the way, but failures are good because you have an opportunity to learn something from them. If you would like to build this project on your own, all my work is public on GitHub, so just go there, download everything and build it on your own. If you manage to get it working better than I did in the video, please send me an email, I would really like to see that. Thanks a lot to BetterHelp for sponsoring and don't forget to check out the link in the description. If you enjoy what I'm doing here on my channel, please consider subscribing, liking the video and sharing it with friends because it helps a lot. Thank you very much for watching, happy making and see you in the next project.